There are many concepts in Montessori, and this is one of the reasons that people find it so hard to talk about Montessori, because it is this very large theoretical framework, and practical framework too, and it all links together. So it's very hard to talk about Montessori, because when you're talking about one thing, you're talking about everything that's connected to it at the same time. What I really enjoyed was learning about that framework and learning about how everything intertwined. How when you're talking about building a child's will, you're also talking about internal discipline and you're talking about the opportunities that we give them to build that in the environment, so you're talking about the environment as well. And so when you just start talking about this one small concept, there's all of these intertwining elements that come into it as well that really give you a sense for the depth of this, of this work. The word Montessori itself simply refers to the name of the person who originated this method of education. Uh, Maria Montessori was a physician and an anthropologist in Italy uh, at the turn of the 19th to the 20th century. But it is primarily a method of education, and it's an approach to education that is child-centered. Most education that we think of is adult-centered or teacher-centered. Learning happens because of what the teacher does. Montessori education is organized so that children learn through their own experiences in the environment and the, the focus is on those children learning through their own activity. Teachers serve to connect the children to that activity so that the learning can happen. Montessori teacher training usually involves working from reference albums of all these many materials that are in the environment. If the teacher's main job is to connect children to those materials, then knowing those materials is going to be very important. In the AMI training, the student literally sees how to give those lessons, how to use those materials, learns all there is to know both practically and theoretically about those materials, and then creates their own reference album so that they actually know the information right from the start. The training process will mean that they will first see how to use the material, so they have visual learning, they will hear about how this material is used and what its purposes are. There's auditory learning, but there's also kinesthetic learning because the trainee student actually practices with the material in the environment. The Association Montessori Internacional, which is what AMI stands for, is an organization that was founded by Maria Montessori in 1929. So it's, of all the many Montessori organizations in the world, it is the only one that was actually founded by the originator of this method. And part of her purpose in founding that organization was to continue her work with the highest integrity and protect the integrity of her work, and specifically to protect the training of the teachers who would carry out on this method. AMI offered a very in-depth, rigorous training that explored not just the practical levels of being a teacher, like what do you do with this material, you know, what, how do you interact with this child in this situation, but also all the underpinning stuff like why are children like they are, how does their development occur, how does their development affect what we do in the classroom. I wanted that level as well. The teacher is what makes all the difference in a Montessori educational environment, and the training of that teacher is very, very important. I came to Montessori on a very intellectual level, but not a lot of practical experience of actually being with groups of children. And my training took care of that. I had a wonderful time in my training course and um, really felt prepared to start that first job.
Montessori is a philosophy of education that came out of observation of the child. And really everything we do is observing what the children are doing in the environment and linking them to activities that serve whatever's going on for them developmentally. A toddler is in this place in their development where all of the things they're doing, they're doing because it comes from this drive within them. And it's that drive to learn and find out everything they can about their environment that toddler needs to be able to explore. And they need to be able to do things themselves. It's, it's just, life is just pushing them towards that. In this context, we are called guides, I feel, because we guide them and we show them materials that will let the child teach themselves. We'll let that learning come from inside. That development that's pushing them forward, the materials we have in the classroom, help the child do that. Presently, I am working with 12, 15 month to three year old children. We're in a classroom type setting, but it's a little bit like a home type setting in that the children get to do all the activities of daily life that that even in this day and age, they may not even get to do at home. They set their own place at the table. Even the new tiny ones that come in, right from the beginning, we give them the opportunity to set up their lunch setting. There's also the opportunity for them to care for other things in, their, in the environment, like the children water the plants in the classroom. They also even dust the leaves and wash the leaves of the plants. As they grow, it seems like they just get this love of learning that comes from within them. A Montessori classroom gives them the opportunity to just fulfill all their desires for learning. And it just continues as, as the program goes up. You see them experiencing all these new things and everything is so filled with wonder and they're so excited. There's so much celebration about life and it's just such a great place to be in that celebration all the time. Children ages three to six, this is what we call primary, and that is a very special time in life. Children are in formation. They are, their personalities aren't complete. They are building themselves. And their characteristics while they're doing that is that they are very concrete and sensorial. They learn by wrapping their hands around the world. And anyone who's been around a child under the age of six knows that. They can't resist literally touching, but they're really exploring with all of their senses. So one of the primary characteristics of a three to six year old is a concrete sensorial learner. They're also parallel learners. They tend to follow their own inner guide. Sometimes they look like they're doing the same things. And of course, they're also very social but in terms of learning activity, they really thrive best when they are able to just follow their own independent line of exploration. They're explorers. So the, the whole job in life is to find out about this place they found themselves. They found themselves in a world, they don't know anything about it, and so they are in the process of literally finding out about that world and creating themselves as a person of that time and place. In a classroom for three to six year olds, probably one of the most uh, unique features is the movement of the children. Since they are parallel learners on this exploration of their world, each child in the room will appear to be on their own path of activity. A unique feature of Monastery Education is free choice of activity. The child chooses what he or she does. A child can work or use a material for as long as he or she wants. 
No one's going to come and say, you've had that long enough, put it away. No one's going to time them and say, you have to use it for a certain amount of time. That's part of the free choice that's built into any Montessori educational environment. Also, particularly for the three to six year old, they're not going to have to share that material or that activity. And everyone in the room has been oriented to a very important rule, which is that when some, something is on the shelf, it's available. If it's not on the shelf, it means someone's using it, and it's not going to be available again until it's back on the shelf. This is a really important rule or limit that's built into the Montessori environment. And that relieves this parallel learner from this anxiety that they're going to have to let someone else use what they're using. The sharing that happens in a Montessori environment is much more profound than what we usually think of in an early childhood environment. It means that everyone is sharing this one material but respecting that when someone has it, it's theirs. It also means that I think respect in general is a really important feature of a Montessori educational environment. Since everyone is using the same material and they're going to put it back ready for someone else to use, they're going to put it back exactly the way they would like to find it too. So we actually build the golden rule right into every choice and every activity. There's a lot to love about this work. There's a lot to love about working with children. And just being around children all the time gives you plenty of gratification in many different ways. But I think of all the things I love about this work, I feel like every day I get to show up and be patient and compassionate and kind and uh, show humility and all of those higher traits of being human, all of those things all of us strive to do in our lives. I get to do that every single day. It's interesting that in systems other than Montessori that the elementary years are the time when we start to focus on everyone does their own work and they need to be at their own table and they need their own book and they need their own homework. And in Montessori, in response to what the children do naturally, we're setting up our classrooms so that the children work together and collaborate and learn all of the skills, all of the kind of hidden skills that go into being able to do that. And in some ways that's much more reflective of what work in the real world is like, in the adult world. Montessori education helps children discover, I think, what is best about themselves. They find that they're all different, that they all have different strengths and things that are more difficult for them, and yet they're able to, to bring out their strengths and work on the things that aren't as easy for them in a very supportive environment. And it's peaceful, and it, cre it makes them peaceful inside, and it changes the way they think about themselves and other people and differences and humanity. I think it's a, it's just, it's a systemic change that happens within children. I think one of the really special things to think about when you look at the classroom is to look at how there is freedom and yet everybody is doing something productive and meaningful. And so I think that's something that really defines the classroom. In a Montessori classroom, there's a great sense of freedom, but um, it's used as a gift and it's used wisely. I, I love to be busy and I love the movement and the, the freedom and the energy. I love that everything is just sort of resting at this near chaotic level and it's just moving and moving and moving and there's so much happening and it works so well. I love that no matter how uh, how active it is, it's always productive and happy and that that hum in the classroom is so positive and that the children can really find 
pleasure in work and learn to work in, a, in an environment that is constantly moving and fluctuating. And I love just being a part of that big picture. It's this tiny community, um, you know, in one room and there's so much to it. To be a part of so many interactions and so many people's lives and to see the joy and learning and work and again, movements is just so, so enjoyable for me. One of the main things Montessori does is it mirrors the kind of experiences that we ha have as adults, but on a smaller scale. Like what does society expect of us? It expects us to be self-regulating. It expects us to be able to make choices. It expects us to be self-sufficient so we're not a drain on others. It expects us to be considerate of other people and follow a certain set of rules, but within those rules we kind of get freedom to do what we like. So for me, at least, Montessori classrooms are a mirror of what the society at large expects of us. And if you're talking about something that's gonna prepare children for the world, this is it. I wanna do this forever. Like. I don't mean to cry or get emotional, but this is amazing. And I would be thrilled and honored to do this forever. I just thought, this is what education should be. And at that point I realized, okay, this is something that I didn't even know education could be. I've never seen anything like this, but this is so creative, this is so, learning is so fun for these children. And in this environment, everything they need is, is there. What I like is the variety and the dynamic experience that we have to uh, have the lectures, have time for discussion, then have time to actually, you know, give the presentation and work one-on-one -on -one with everyone. I enjoy the people the most. Um, I've really found a lot of great friends here in the training program and, and the staff is wonderful. Um, I've, I've loved making those connections with the Montessori community. Every person that I met that had anything to do with Montessori, I just felt, these are my people. These are intelligent, hardworking, committed, peace-loving people concerned with making education and children's lives and humanity better. Even if you're not necessarily set on becoming a Montessori teacher, it's such good life lessons that you're learning and, and things that can apply to everything else in life, not just to teaching. Taking the training has been an enormous transformation for me and everyone around me because while thinking about how you talk to children and how you teach a child something, you're really looking inside yourself and figuring out how you communicate it all. When you become a Montessori teacher or a Montessori parent or a Montessori adult, you, you're really looking at human nature, you're looking at the the best way that a child can unfold and become, reach the potential that every child has.